Hello and welcome to ICANN Media. We are coming to you from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. We are just outside of Canada, a place where a huge conference is going on called Globe 2014. I'm your host, Rob Hislop, and over the next couple of days, we're going to be heading into the conference, taking in some of the many sessions and talking to some of the keynote speakers. Some of the topics discussed, changing energy landscapes and responsible resource management. Now, there are over 250 plus speakers, world leaders in their industry, talking here over the next three days. 50 plus countries are represented and there are over 300 exhibitors at the trade show. We are going to give you a taste of what Globe 2014 has in store. Joining us now on ICANN Media is Mike Harcourt, former Premier of British Columbia. Thanks for your time. Pleasure, Rob. Uh, tell us, you're at a session right now, it's called Earning Social License to Operate. As a right. former government official, obviously you understand what that's all about. Well, it means that communities uh, have to see your project as positive in the long term for that particular community. and. Uh, particularly with Aboriginal communities that are just now uh, starting to, to gain uh, the potential to become self-governing and self-sufficient, not just in Canada, but all over the world. Uh, something like 600 million uh, Indigenous people in the world, mostly right in the middle of where oil and gas and mining and, uh, and forestry and other companies want to do economic activity. So having a social license from the local communities, whether they're Aboriginal or not, is really important. Mm -hmm. One of the comments made here is that two of the groups of people don't trust large industry and government. So how do yeah. you ensure that you get a social license without just ramming things through? Well, that, that will ensure you won't get it through <clears throat> or at a huge cost, uh, political and other costs. So the key is, is, is genuine uh, engagement and uh, inclusiveness and, and, and respect. I mean, those are easy words to say, but hard to do. And you have to show it every day that you're being respectful to the local community, the leadership, the uh, traditional cultures you may be uh, involved with, understanding uh, the nature of uh, the community, uh, long-term values, long-term goals. Uh, to Sure, you can have a prosperous economy and the mining or oil company can do well, but the local community wants to do well too, but sustainably, mm -hmm. so that uh, you don't poison the rivers or dry up uh, streams or aquifers, uh, create air pollution, uh, destroy the forests, uh, agricultural land, uh, and deal with some of the social issues, uh, building uh, good education and, and uh, health facilities, uh, infrastructure for the community in terms of water and, mm -hmm. and uh, dealing with proper housing, and respecting the culture that you're in. And, and so that's, that's easy to say and hard to do. Well, it was interesting because one gentleman said, what do you think people will hold as more valuable? A new ice rink with your company's name on it or actually treating its employees with respect? And the new ice rink came in second. Well, it, it does. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not the infrastructure. It's, it's the genuineness of that ice rink being a community priority. Mm -hmm. Uh, where that decision is made respectfully, uh, agreed to, and it's part of a larger uh, sustainability plan for that particular community. And I did some work when I was appointed by uh, the Prime Minister and the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs as a BC Treaty Commissioner uh, for four years on working with uh, Aboriginal communities uh, right across Canada to be able to put in place a long-term sustainability strategy called a community uh, comprehensive community plan. And that's happening all across the country now. So a lot of Aboriginal communities have a long-term vision based on their traditional culture, mm -hmm. based on modernizing their governance and becoming economically self-sufficient, young people having a hopeful future. So we're, we're gaining the ability to be able to uh, have uh, forest and mining and oil and extractive industries to work in a respectful way with communities that have a greater capacity to be able to, to work on that social license. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that one of the things the oil industry has going against it is its past reputation, which people tend to draw upon, and politicians is that they may not want to do something that's unpopular. So how do you get these two sides to realize that, that they may have to change the way they do business? Well, I think sometimes uh, it's learned painfully. Uh, you know, in British Columbia, we have uh, two large uh, oil pipelines that are going forward, and I think uh, one of them, Kinder Morgan, is, is doing a far better job 
of respectful relationships with the communities they're dealing with than uh, the Gateway Pipeline, and it's showing up in the results. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. We've been chatting with Mike Harcourt here on ICANN Media.